Hello, I'm Matthew Weinstock with Hospitals and Health Networks reporting to you live from the Health Forum American Hospital Association Leadership Summit in San Francisco, California. I'm joined right now as I usually am to open these our coverage of the summit with Ian Morrison, who will be leading us through the proceedings for the next few days. Ian, thanks for being with me. Glad to be here, Matthew. It's always a pleasure. So Ian, this, the theme for this year is transformation and innovation. And I want to ask you, as you travel the country and talk to hospital leaders, how are you seeing innovation in particular play out across the field? Well, I think we're starting to see, you know, more and more organizations embrace what I call the innovation imperative that, you know, the realization that there's so much that we've got to do to make the system work better, faster, cheaper, and that we're not going to do it by just working harder. We've got to work differently. And I think that's where the whole innovation agenda comes in. Um, and I'd say across the country, more and more leaders are, are embracing that agenda and are going after it aggressively. And one of the things, Ian, also that you wrote about for H&H &H and Daily is this idea of improvement fatigue on the front line. So this conference in particular will hear a lot about how hospitals and health systems are transforming, innovating, improving. But how do you get to that front line staff from being just feeling overwhelmed by what's coming their way? Well, I think that's an important insight, and I do believe that there is a fair amount of improvement fatigue. It's sort of basically caused by a number of things, but perhaps the biggest factor has been the electronic health record, which has been rocky in terms of implementation. I think all of us agree it's a good thing uh, to make healthcare digital, but it is not, it's not happened without some pain uh, to frontline caregivers. And I think you add that on top of improvement initiatives such as checklists and, and uh, you know, patient safety initiatives, all of which are worthy and noble and important and we, all, we ought to do, but it often makes the frontline folks, particularly people delivering care who have a day job, kind of feel a bit overwhelmed. So I think the way to address this, Matthew, to me is, first of all, sort of giving people a clear picture of the why of change. You know, why are we doing all of this? And I think organizations that are thriving are the ones who have communicated that clearly. And the other point I'd make is sort of trying to engage physician and other clinical leaders more actively in the process so that they're active participants in this rather than, you know, being burdened by something else they've got to deal with. But I think we know we got to do it. Um, the question is, how do we bring everybody along? Right. And Ian, I think one of the things we're going to hear throughout the next couple of days here is the, the idea of consumer or consumerism, which is penetrating so many different parts of healthcare the, these days. How do you feel the field is positioned to make that shift from thinking about patient to consumer? Well, I think it's a necessary one. About half of, I would say, half of the field is committed to a pathway of taking more risk, being responsible for population health. It's not universal, and it's about maybe half of all of us will get to there eventually. But I think once we start going down that road, we recognize we've got to think about patients and consumers uh, in slightly different ways. Uh, and the consumers include, obviously, those people who are plan members who use very little health care. And reaching those people and servicing those people is important. Um, I think a big word to, to watch on consumerism is segmentation because different consumers have different perspectives. Um, one of the groups that I've pointed to and written about a lot is the what we call a shallow pocketed consumer. You know, typical bottom half of the income distribution does not have a lot of money, does not have a lot of savings, and you know, one healthcare event can put them in deep trouble financially. So I think we've got to be sensitive to them. At the other extreme, we've got affluent younger consumers, um, you know, here in San Francisco Bay Area in particular, the Googles and the Apples and so forth, who want the doctors from Stanford to come and see them uh, rather than them going to the doctor. So I think institutions, depending on their geography, depending on who they're serving, are seeing the importance of consumers and, and reacting and segmenting uh, towards those consumers to deliver services that make sense, uh, both financially and in terms of high quality care. But it's also important, as I heard someone say, to recognize that they do become a patient once they walk through your door. They're a consumer until that point. Absolutely, and I think we should never lose sight of that fact that it's, it, you know, while in any given insurance pool, maybe 50% of patients don't use, uh, you know, the their card, if you like, uh, for healthcare services in a given year, that doesn't mean that it won't happen to them. And almost everybody, you know, needs the health system eventually. And, and there are very, very few lucky people who can avoid interacting with it. And all of us, once we become patients, become frightened, become scared, become vulnerable, and we need the care and compassion that great hospitals and great caregivers can deliver. And that idea of care and compassion is one of our keynoters here, Dr. Artul Gawande, 
we have a really stellar lineup. Are there folks that you're particularly interested in hearing their stories as they talk to the crowd? Oh, I, I think it's another amazing year. I mean, we seem to do every year in the HA and Laura Woodburn who organizes this is, is fantastic procuring, I think, some of the best minds uh, in the country, not only on healthcare, but on a whole bunch of issues. So I'm very excited. I'm always excited to hear from Atul. Um, he yeah. is a, a medical genius, in my view, and a communicator of par excellence. And, and Michael Porter, you know, invented strategy, um, you know, one would, would think. And so, you know, I mean, I think hearing from them as our openers is just phenomenal. And we've got a fantastic lineup of folks. And I'm really enjoying, uh, going to enjoy sitting down with Michael Lewis. I've read a lot of his books and he's uh, a funny guy and I think his perspective on all things to do with the economy and the global economy will be very entertaining. Oh great Ian again I appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much and good luck with the summit. And I'm Matthew Weinstock reporting from the AHA Health Forum Leadership Summit. We'll have continuing coverage throughout the week in uh, H&H and Daily. Thanks for tuning in.